What up, peeps? It's your girl, Dodge. Come back to your girl takes. Well, you guys, it's that time again. It's movie news time, and it's been a minute since I've done said movie news. Uh, I think the last one I did might have been in November, and then a couple of things um, were happening behind the scenes. Ended up having to take a little bit of a break, but I basically have been back since, I want to say, maybe the last week into December, going to beginning of January. Uh, just, yeah, just kind of needed a little break, a little bit away time from this, because um, I was constantly putting them out all the time, almost every weekend. And sometimes you just need to give yourself that. Needless to say, a lot's been happening. A lot's been going on. I have a couple of things I just want to kind of, um, kind of touch base on a little bit and kind of update on just for myself and as well as you guys can, you know, take, you know, into that as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and just jump into it. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about, which really almost all the time I always talk about is what's happening with the movies coming out and what's happening with the theaters. Now, you all, we're in 2021 right now. As you can clearly see, um, things are still, you know, not finding its way back to, which I will never really believe will be normal again in regards to us doing our everyday um, activities, movie going being one of them. I know I talked about off and on all of really since last year about the situation since the pandemic had started up where it became very visible back in March and talking about say AMC, Cinemark, um, what's another, um, Regal, just the situation of people deciding if we're going to go out there, some of them pushing it till summer, then July, then maybe October, November. And then here we are going into the new year and some movies have definitely been pushed back. I'm going to get into those a little bit on later on to this, but it just looks like Honestly, the form, um, dominant, you know, form of watching the movies really right now is streaming. Now, granted, I know I was hearing a little bit of information about AMC basically having to find a way to come up with a little over 750 to 70, 750 million, excuse me, to just stay afloat pretty much. And I think they actually surpassed it and got over a billion to cover them due to the fact that they were not garnering any type of um, money truly coming in from moviegoers, you know, to keep, you know, because of the pandemic being the main catalyst for that. And like I stated before, it's really unfortunate it has to be like that. But like I said, we're living in a, a climate where it's kind of out of our control until we get it under control. And if anyone's under living under rock, we see where we are now, where they're trying to, you know, figure out how to go about getting back, you know, vaccines to millions and millions of people. So we can slowly start finding a way to getting back to doing other things, you know, besides just the norm of, you know, if you're working from home, if someone you have to go on once in a while, just, you know, grocery store, limited access to going out as much as possible, staying, you know, in proximity of others, you know, just being more mindful of yourself and others around you so everybody can be safe. So my whole thing with that is, um, it's just going to, how it's going to be. You see what happened in December around Christmas, uh, Wonder Woman did come out. Uh, it did very well being that it was, um, some limited theaters. I will say this. I know with Warner Brothers, they put a lot of stuff where it was either streaming or theaters. A lot of people were into Plays with that and mostly movie uh, companies because they want to make more of the the more of their money back, you know, in the theaters, and that's not going to be happening anytime soon. We already know that's not going to happen. So it's come to this. A lot of us have a few streaming services that we utilize on a, a daily basis. So it wasn't that you know off you know kill for that to be a consideration, you know, and in the end recouping some of that money. You see how. Um, Amazon Prime is going to be taken into the fold with that as well. I'm looking forward to in March um, coming to America. So that's going to be nice um, to see. And a couple other movies come out. I know this week, um, this actually tomorrow, uh, The Little Thing starring uh, Denzel Washington, Jared Leto is coming out, you know, you know, so that's going to be an interesting one. Just a lot of this movies that honestly we would have preferred to see in the theaters are going to be coming out uh, the streams in some places limited theater whatever but it still won't be the same some of their main areas you know certain cities like new york city california they're still kind of you know crunched down where they're not able to go out and do that so it's gonna be interesting if amc could stay afloat you know going into 2021 now so I'm interested to see how this uh, parlays. So with that said, let me kind of just go into some movies that have been pushed back. Some movies are being pushed back really honestly into 2022. So, but some of these are 2021. I'm going to note um, one of them, of course, we were talking about how No, no Time to Die was supposed to come out. It's supposed to come out around in November. It looks like it's been pushed now back to October 8th, 2021. Then we have, of course, A Quiet Place. It was supposed to come out 
earlier in this year, but it's not going to be September 2021. Now we see also um, Morbius. I'm bummed about that because that was supposed to come out this year around um, October. Now they're coming out January of 2022. That one hurt. That hurt me to my core because if any of you all follow me as much as I talk about Morbius for a full damn year, that hurt. Yes, I'm cussing. I don't care. It needed to be said. Secondly, another movie I'm looking forward to also that's coming out, but um, just don't have a full poster on this one is um, Guillermo del Toro's The Nightmare Alley. I'm looking forward to that one. It's saying December 3rd, 2021. So that'll be interesting. That's all the way at the end of the year. So with everything happening, maybe the vaccines, we'll see how it progresses. If that's the case, maybe by this um, coming late fall, they might open up. But again, even if they open it, does not mean that people will eventually just go ahead and come back out into the theaters. Some people are going to be hesitant. They want to see how, you know, said vaccine works, you know, how how's it get taken to people before people just jump out there. I know some people really just want to go out there, trust and believe me. When I saw the new trailer that just dropped on the 24th for uh, Godzilla and Kong, I literally was just like that is the type of film you want to see in the theaters and it just straight freaking pains me that I'm not going to be able to see it in the theater granted it might be limited theater but it's supposed to be of course on stream service HBO Max so yes I'm going to watch it in the comfort of my home we don't have to worry about that but it still does take away from the fact that a lot of us like seeing these type of films and also with the collective of all the people in the theater you know the hype is the hype is real we all get into it and it just makes it more enjoyable so anybody who's a movie goer truly gonna understand what I mean when I say that so so besides that, another fave that I'm looking forward to seeing, which I'm anticipating, excuse me, was Edgar Wright's The Last Night in Soho. I'm really looking forward to that one. It's been pushed to October 2021. It was actually supposed to come out in April this year, 2021. So I'm excited for that. One I know for certain that's not going to be coming out on any streaming service, not even Disney Plus. And I want to talk about this because this one we waited for forever. And I'm just like, okay is of course going to be Black Widow. Now, granted, they're staying firm with their May 2021 date in May, what is that? May 7th to be exact. Um, they're thinking some individuals, you know, and I probably say a little bit of myself, being the simple fact that um, Wonder Woman did very well, you know, there's a possibility of money, you know, them getting some money, regrouping up, whichever. It's a possibility I could see that's, you know, part of the story, but then a lot of people we really want to see it in the theaters. And being that we waited so long for her to finally get her, you know, solo film, whatever, it takes a little bit from that. You know, I am a fan of the character, you know, so I don't know how to feel. We'll see. Something makes me think if they don't come out in May, that's going to probably be a consideration for it to come onto Disney+. Plus. You see what they did with Milan. So... We'll see. I'm going to keep tabs on that one for sure because that is one of those anticipated films. I love the trailer. The trailer was beyond epic. The casting on Rachel Wise, you know, I'm just I'm just here for it. So I'm really, really wanting to see this movie. So I'm really hoping that doesn't get pushed to 2022. I'm hoping they stay firm with this year. And if all else fails, please, please, if you have to, just come out streaming. A lot of us have at least a few streaming services. I, you know, it's kind of just, it is what it is. So just want to kind of get those out of the way. Now let's go ahead and move on to some other stuff, some movie updates. Now this one is a movie I remember seeing the first one. It came out, was it 2014? This has to do with Edge of Tomorrow 2. And I really, really enjoyed that film. It was directed by Doug Lemon. And it was starring, of course, Tom Cruise and um, my girl, I'm about to lose her name. I can't believe I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. And I don't want to do her so foul. Emily Blunt, my bad, you guys. Um, I love the overall premise of the storyline, how it's just like, you know, almost like a groundhog dick of sorts, you know, the fight sequences, you know, just everything about it was just so damn refreshing. And it did so well at the, at the actual box office. I so enjoyed that film. I'm a fan of Tom Cruise anyway. Most of the time he's very strategic about the films he, you know, he actually picks. He does a little bit of everything, but I like when he picks a really good action movie. And this one, you know, held up to us, you know, to the hype. And also with Emily Blunt, seeing her in a totally different type of way. You know, a lot of people like always think about, you know, Devil Wears Prada. She did a couple of different comedies. So when she got into this one, flexing, I was here for it. Now the fact we have been waiting for a while for them to decide if they were going to do a sequel. Now, from what we're hearing from Doug Lemon, let me kind of just go ahead and get into what he stated recently. He says, I've always been interested in the idea of a sequel being more character driven than the first film. He says, because that's not how things are normally done. That's my approach when developing a sequel because Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt are such phenomenal actors. He also says, um, 
you know, it's his goal. I get sometimes the sequel just has to have more firepower, you know, or more explosions, but no visual effects is going to top what you're going to get from a great scene performed by Tom and Emily. And I get what he's saying with that, but I will say this, um, even if you want to make it very more personalized, you know, storyline, you better have some action somewhere in the midst of that, because if it falls flat in that area, even regardless, some people, not all, might not, you know, really like it. And they will let it be known in review sections, whatever, around to me, whatever you want to call it, they will definitely let it be known. And that'll be like a lesson in like, okay, we see what you're saying, but you still need to give them this and still give them that. You know, you can't give one out the other. And I'm here for understanding what he means as an overall movie goer. I like a little bit of everything, but when you're dealing with the first one being about that, it's kind of hard to feel like, you know, let me make it this way. And they're like, well, didn't the first one have this? You got to keep that in mind too. A lot of people like to stay true to themselves when it comes to their directing craft. So that that's going to be very interesting to see. Now, right now, um, we know that Tom Cruise, of course, is working on the next um, installment of Mission Impossible, yes. And Emily Blunt, um, just waiting for Quiet Place 2 to come out. Now, I'm not sure when they're going to be able to get together. Who's to say, you know, remember I was talking about a couple months back, um, him working on a movie that's going to be based all around going to space. I don't know if he's going to want to do this one first before that one. It just depends on the time schedules or timetables for both actors because they're both are very, you know, they're just both are staying busy, you know, definitely Tom for certain. So it'll be interesting. I know he really wants to do it. He definitely enjoyed the first one. And I know he has it on his list of just how many God forbid, has on his list of just checking off one after another. The brother is busy. So I'm going to keep tabs on this one because I really hope they do make it. I really enjoy the first one. And if when we do find out about the second one, I most definitely plan to watch the first one prior to that one coming out. So with that said, when I know more, you all know more. Now, in regards to this particular film, I'm actually looking forward to seeing this is based off of a video game. This has to do with Borderlands. Now, didn't know too much about this. This has kind of been, you know, talked about in like for a couple of weeks, the last month or so. I'm excited for the simple fact that the director who's attached to this, that's L.A. Roth. I'm a fan of some of his work. Very gruesome, gory work. Um, two of my favorite films from him, of course, is Hostel and uh, Cabin Fever. Ugh, just thinking about it, it's my skin crawl. But I just love that he's going to be attached to this type of video game. And the fact that the characters coming into play, they're going to be attached to this. I was very surprised by the overall casting, but not so much. Video game wise, the first one uh, being Kevin Hart, not so much because you all remember he did, uh, you know, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, and he did Jumanji, The Next Level. So that aspect I can see. Now, also cast in is Kate Blanchett. I'm excited for that. I'm a fan of a lot of her work. So I'm excited for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and get into a little bit of the synopsis that I have in front of me where it says um, Hart will play the character Roland as a skilled soldier turned mercenary in the film. Um, also, regards to Blanchett, she'll be playing the character Lidith. She's kind of a thief siren, one of the main protagonists um, in an open world, you know, game. And it says, um, in the distant future, when four vault hunters travel to the distant planet Pandora, to hunt down an alien vault rumored to contain advanced alien technology. That's really all I need. And I'm already intrigued by that. So I'm excited for that. Now, I will say this a little bit comes in regards to what Ellie Roth had to say when they were discussing the upcoming movie that they're going to be um, doing to the him and uh, Nathan Kahane, excuse me. So let me say what Ellie said. He said, I'm thrilled to be working with Kevin. Borderlands is a different kind of role for him. And we are aware to um, excited and thrilled. The audience will see a side of Kevin they've never seen before. He's going to be an amazing role in. Also, Nathan, he says, Kevin has been behind some of the world's biggest blockbusters and our source material is inspired by one of the world's best selling video games. We love... We love the way our filmmaking team has adopted the story and we wouldn't couldn't be even in we couldn't be in better creative hands. So got a little tongue tied there. But yes, I'm really looking forward to this because it really does take Kevin out of his um comfort zone. I will say over the course of a good what, ten years, I think I've been watching him. I'm used to him always doing more so comedy aspect. Now, I know he recently did a movie, cannot remember the title. I might put this um the actual uh, movie up, whatever, where it's one of more of a um drama type of uh, film. 
but he that's his that's in some ways to me personally his niche is that comedy aspect plus he does you know comedy special so of course so i love that he's going to branch out a little bit because i like to see him do something else because after a while i'll be honest with you i'm not going to lie and sugarcoat it some of his comedy i don't always watch whichever i can't get into all of it i will say this him and 40 year old virgin will always be one of my favorites because oh my god i was literally in tears but yes he definitely is funny some of his specials are funny but it depends on the actual film you know in regards to whatever the storyline is about whatever but needless to say this is going to be refreshing. I look forward to this. Nice for Kate Blanchett. She's like a little um, chameleon. She can mix it up too. She's like one of those actors similar to how I feel about Mel Streep, where she can do all these types of different roles. And I'm so here for her to show her battery and this one playing a, a siren thief. So I'm looking forward to this one. It doesn't give us an idea, but it does say they're going to start possibly doing um, this film maybe towards... Um, sometime later this year so maybe we'll get something in 2022 possibly 2023 so as more information comes out and even more casting who knows they're probably the two main leads we might have some other supporting cast once we know a little bit more as i stated you will know more so with that said now this one kind of glad we're getting a little information on this because i was really excited and looking forward to seeing this this has to do with the next installment for the escape room now i saw the first one that came out excuse me it came out 2019 starred uh deborah allen wall also J. Ellis, terry uh taylor russell uh, logan miller you know of course they all show up at this building facility and they have to do this escape room they all have to you know figure out the little clues whatever and all that otherwise one by one you know each of them are all being picked off done very good the suspense the thriller in it it was done very very well now we'll say there's a couple of the characters did live and those were uh, Taylor, Taylor Russell and Logan Miller. And the way they left it at the end, it left it open-ended where they can do the sequel. Now, we have not seen or heard anything as of late. Now, granted, this movie was supposed to come out last year. It was supposed to come out in April. Then it got pushed, I think, was it to, um, was it January uh, 2021? Right now, excuse me, yes, because that's exactly because I was wondering. I had heard nothing. It was like a drop on the face of this earth. Now we're hearing that the date for this now is going to be January 2022, a whole entire year. We have to wait for this. And I'm kind of like, okay, ugh, that's three years, basically from when it was first, you know, came out, which was January. Honestly, if I'm going to speak, I think it was January or February of 2019. So yeah, I'm just like, okay, we have to wait full three years. Okay. It just can't seem kind of the same, you know, cause it'll seem so far out, like, you know, but, uh, it's the movies, you know, you just go with whatever the timetable is. So that'll be interesting. I just really hope, um, the hype is really good on this one because that first one, it really, really did a good job. And I was really here for all the characters. The cast was really great. I'm missing a couple of names. I cannot remember. I think it was Tyler Labine. I think he was another one, if I'm not mistaken. But it was just an overall ensemble cast, which I loved. I loved a little bit of the um, serious aspect, the comedy from Tyler. It was done really, really well. So I'm going to keep tabs on this one because I really want to see when they think they're going to probably most likely maybe maybe fall time we'll probably get an actual trailer for it, probably late uh, summer fall and then kind of see if we see our you know returning characters as well as the new ones are going to be actually in the film so with that said moving from that one now this one i really want to talk about because i'm excited i talked about this briefly i want to say um earlier maybe late summer fall and this has to do with tomb raider 2 i am beyond excited for this one this um of course stars alicia vikander she did the first one uh well this become a re-imaging reboot let me clarify that the first song with her attached was uh done in 2019 and it was done i actually enjoyed it um wanted a little bit more action but for what we got it was good because we we're trying to flush her out as so, you know to kind of get used to her and the character Laura Croft and then get more of an origin from her and I liked the other characters within it the way they left it open and it on that was really good now I had been waiting to see when it was going to come out when they're going to do this of course Ben Whitley was the actual director attached but being that he's a part of Meg 2 think timetable wise he's not able to do it so now they're bringing in some big guns and big guns when i mean misha green i am a fan of her work she has been attached to stuff behind the scenes with the show heroes i love when she did underground and also one of my ultimate favorite uh, series lovecraft country so i feel that this movie is in capable hands I am beyond excited for this because I know from what I've heard and I follow her actually on Twitter. She actually has been, you know, recently since it came out, the news just broke, I think earlier, 
um, in the week or maybe a week ago at the most, how she feels, how she loves the Laura Crap, you know, games. And she just kind of spoke on them. She used a couple of different types of emojis about it. So that lets me know that her excitement to be behind the lens being that now granted some people say just because you know people are you know being attached or like it whatever doesn't mean that it's a home run whatever but that's not to say it can't be being that she you know directed was an episode episode eight of um the lovecraft country a series you know and that was a really good episode even though that's not a full full feature film that still shows the potential you know so i feel like she can do this. I'm, I'm not really worried. I feel like with her, you know, you know, female lead and female director in this instance, I'm, I'm excited for that. If anybody's watched Lovecraft, you truly understand. If you've not watched it, I know some people are like, oh, the hype, the hype is real and it deserves a bit of the hype. Some people are like, oh, no, you need to get on that. Now, if it's not your cup of thing because of the overall genre, then I understand, whatever. But if that's not the only reason, then you need to watch. Matter of fact, it comes out on DVD in Feb. This and what actually starting February is going to be coming out. I just don't know the actual date in February, but I will be snatching that up. So I'm excited for her. I'm looking forward to her doing more behind um, the camera, and I'm looking forward to finding about a season two for Lovecraft Country not to continue for that. But I'm looking forward to seeing Alicia Vikander back. Who else will be back? If anybody from the previous um, casting as well. But again, if you know if y'all saw the last one, you understand what I mean that they left it open. So I don't know if she's going to take some of what happened from that previous storyline or she's going to take her in a whole different direction but either way it looks like it's going to be a nice journey for Laura Croft and I'm here for it so moving from that now this one I'm definitely excited about and this has to do with a new movie coming out called The Formula that's going to be starring uh Robert De Niro and John Boyega now of all the films, I would have never thought these two would be working together. If anything, I'm working together anytime soon, whichever, you know, John's building up his craft, doing it and what can I say about De Niro? I've been a fan of him for 30 years. So I'm just here to see these two do their thing together. Now, this movie, let me kind of get a little bit into it. It says uh, the Formula will follow Boyega's character. Um, he's going to be playing a Formula One uh, racing prodigy who is forced to become a getaway driver to save the only family he has left. Now, this one, um, in regards to De Niro, they says in the Formula, it's likely he could be playing maybe a criminal or a thief, you know, who's taking part in the actual uh, heist within the film. Um, if you all remember, memorable movie, y'all, 1995's He, Hello. <laughs> just I just I just love that movie. Him and Val Kilmer. Oh my gosh, and Al Pacino, just just epicness. But needless to say, I'm really looking forward to this. I've been enjoying um Boyega ever since I saw him attack the block. And of course we did the Star Wars, you know, most recent films for that. You know, he's kind of branching out doing some other things. I know he's working on a film that's actually in production right now with um what is it, Jamie Foxx and what's the title? I want to know that. It was uh they cloned Tyrone and I know De Niro's working on a new film. It's going to be kind of untitled right now, but it's by David um, Russell. It's going to be starring um, him, Christian Bale, and Margot Robbie. And I'm really looking forward to that. So we already know both of them are busy. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to see who else is casting this. But this definitely has me intrigued. Most of the time, I like a lot of the work from De Niro. So I already feel after he did um, The Irishman, which was on Netflix. So I'm not really you know surprised by this. And plus, it was nominated. So. He puts out such amazing work. So again, when I know more, you all will know more. Now this one, of course, looking forward to this one. This is another one. This has to do with Extraction 2, starring Chris Hemsworth. Um, the first one, of course, from Netflix. Netflix will be putting them out there, you guys. The action, action, action packed. Now I will say this for the um, first uh, time director. What's his name? Um, Sam Hargrave. Um, that was his first time behind the lens. I'm excited to see what he's going to put forth. Now, I know a lot of people, even though we liked it, I will say this, um, the storyline was, you know, a little bit okay. Now, granted, I will say in regards to the overall storyline now, in regards to the character played by Chris Hemsworth, a lot to unpack there. So I could foresee them wanting to dabble in that, whichever, you know, if you also saw some of his things at the beginning before he was sent on a mission to, you know, to help get the boy. I really am hoping because of the way they ended it, they definitely, you know, we already knew they're going to do a second one. After the movie came out, it wasn't maybe a couple of days later, maybe a week later, they'd already confirmed there was going to be a second installment. So I'm already excited for this. Now, mind you, at the moment, he is working. He's, of course, in Australia working on Thor, uh, Love and Thunder. So we already know once that's hopefully done, um, hopefully he'll be going right into this one. I'm hoping so. They're claiming it starts production late fall. Now, if that's the case, I'm curious to see um, 
exactly when they plan for this to come out. Now, let me just kind of um, note with this, they're hoping, of course, again, let me bring it into it because it always plays a part right now for all movies being made, you know, COVID, the pandemic, you know, if everything stays away and needs water and all that, then hopefully they'll be able to start on time in, like they said, in, you know, in the late fall. That will be nice. Now, granted, I feel this most likely if it's starting fall, maybe sometime, you know, mid-2022, late, you know, a year from this time around, it'll come out again and be on Netflix. So we can already know for sure where it'll be coming out. And I'm just really, really uh, looking forward to this. I will say Chris Hemsworth, he puts out a lot of good films and I love when he does his action. He does an excellent, excellent job. And I'm really looking forward to him in Thor 4, you know, and speaking, you know, of that. Speaking of that, let's just go ahead and get into that. Um, I know they just priestly put out some stuff in regards to uh, set photos for Thor 4. I'm already excited because we're now knowing... Uh, because I didn't know for a while, because I didn't keep track of it while I was, you know, enjoying my little bit of hiatus from movie news, that um, Christian Bale would be playing Gore, what is it, Gore, the, the what is it, Gore the God Butcher. I'm excited now that I know who he's actually playing, because for a month, it was literally unknown. And I'm really looking forward to just delving into his origin story. And I wanted to know some of that because I just want to kind of bring it up for some people who might be aware of it. You know, a lot of the people who probably do watch me probably know about their comic books, you know, but as I always say, you all, I'm not aware or well-versed. So I like to kind of put it out there so I can get a little bit more understanding. Now for Gore's origin, this basically has to do around his purpose of wanting to kill, you know, gods, you know, through the Marvel universe. Hence, of course, Thor. Now it says in regards to why he hates the gods, it notes um, he was raised on an unnamed planet that struggled to was it maintain any sense of life due to its poor conditions. It says the society constantly prayed to the gods to ask for their help, and Gore lost everyone he loved eventually. He decided that the gods must not be real and was later enraged when he saw two of them fighting to death. Since Gore blamed the gods for his terrible life, he used the all-black necro sword to slay his first god and then and there. Um, so pretty much that's going to be, um, Christian Bale's character's motivation throughout the film, you know, so that's going to be very, very interesting. And on top of, you know, characters, you know, coming back, um, of course, Natalie Portman's character coming back, uh, Sith's coming back played by Jamie Alexander, um, uh, Valkyrie played by Tessa Thompson's coming back. Of course, you know, I'm just, I'm really just hyped to see the film. I know it's going to be good. Of course, you know, director Watiti is coming back. He did his stamp on Thor 3 Ragnarok. It was so freaking good. I was here for it. I love seeing um, another character brought into the fold. Um, was it uh, Jeff Goldblum? I love me some of him. So I can only imagine how just as good this one will be in the next part of uh, the journey uh, with Thor. You know, and of course, with this love life and all the little shenanigans, you know, because of course, you know, you left, you know, Valkyrie in charge. So it's going to be very interesting to see all this, you know, stuff and tug, whichever and being which way. Also, I noted um, in my picture, um, Matt Damon, of course, recently just flew down to Australia for his role. Still unknown. I'm like, oh, my God, can we know some? So I don't know if you know what? When they do that, as much as it bothers me. Once we do know, anybody who reads the comics will have a better understanding. And then some people, I hate to say it, sometimes have a tendency to want to spoil a little bit of the storyline. So you know what? Let me just take it for a grain of salt of not knowing. It adds a little bit of mystery elsewhere to the film. Now that I know about Christian Bell, I'm actually happy to have that little bit. So I'll take that for what it is. But yeah, I'm just ready for them to just, you know, finish it up. Like you said, it's this fall for his other movie, Chris, uh, Chris Hemsworth. So at least we know this will probably be wrapped up before uh, summertime, probably going right into spring, summer. So that lets me know. We look forward to seeing this. I'm excited for this. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really ready to see. And I really want to see what Christian Bale looks like in character. You know, he said already a while back that he's not trying to be losing a certain amount of weight or gaining a certain amount of weight anymore. He's been there, done that. He doesn't want to do it. And I don't blame him. I think he did the machinist and instantly went straight into that after that to do the, um, the Batman trilogy, the dark, you know, Dark Knight's trilogy, excuse me. Yeah, that's not a good thing, you know, to be fluctuating like that. So hopefully, however they do him, some, you know, actual, you know, CGI, maybe, you know, some practical effects, whatever, and all that, he'll look, you know, the part. But I'm excited. I'm really excited to see. And I like that him and Matt Damon are going to be a part of Marvel, you know, even though I didn't think that they would, you know, would ever want to do, do that. Well, I mean, Christian Bale did, you know, he was a bad man. So let me stop. It is what it is. Just take on a good character, something different. It makes it refreshing. So moving from that. Now, this one, I just want to kind of talk about just a few minutes. Um, 
And this has to do with the Predator reboot. Now, I heard about this a couple weeks ago, and I was just like, okay. Now, let me just put out there how I feel. I love the original, which came out in 87, which starred my main man, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, Carl Weathers, you know. I just love that film. That I went to the theater to see that. The thing was epic. It was epicness. It was something never seen. The creature, you know, the fight sequences, you know, everything about it. Then, of course, when the second one came out, what was it, 1990 with um, Danny Glover, didn't like it so, so much. Um, it was okay, but the storyline was just kind of uh, all over the place, whatever, and them being more in the city, whatever. It just it didn't mesh whatever for me as much, whichever. Now, I will say this. Then the one that came out, what was it, 2010, uh, starring, was a Predator, title Predator. It was starring Adrian Brody. I actually liked that one. I really liked it. And I liked the overall cast in that one. Um, that one was done very, very well. And then they had the one that came out, what was it, 2018, 2019, 2018, I want to say. Um, very interesting. <laughs> the overall premise of that when it came out not that long ago, it was more of on the instance of being more on a comedy aspect on it and just kind of, you know, lackluster in storyline because it just kind of like, it was almost like storyline was just thrown together. You know, the part of the ending had the potential of what I could see and envision when the guy was trying to figure it out, whatever, and then it cloaked onto his body, whatever, and all that and took over him for like a, a few minutes. And then it un unhooked. And I was just like, okay, that scene was bomb because everybody in the theater literally were just like in a gas at that scene. But overall, the overall storyline was just, it did nothing for us. So to know that Dan, what is it, uh, Trak Trachtenberg is considering, of course, doing a reboot. My whole thing is this. Um, I can see the potential of that, that doing that. I will say this. Where's the storyline going to come from? I know with the first one, you know, you had this, you know, special ops team going out there, you know, trying to, you know, find a, you know, their group, you know, another team that they had re relocated. So it gave a little bit of layers and all that. And then them coming across the young, young woman and then not realizing what they've walked into, whatever. And now they're fighting for their lives or whatever with something they can't see. Uh, same thing with the second installment. Same thing with the third installment was a little different with the storyline was the simple fact that these people are waking up midair. I will say that that literally was not expecting that, but the fact that they're, you know, having to deal with, you know, this creature and then dealing amongst each other, having something that's even more, you know, like of a evil, you know, are lurking amongst the, the group of people. I just don't know if they're going to want to go with some sort of storyline, of course, you know, based around humans again, or if they want to make this all about, um, what's the way I could phrase it? Explore the predators, you know, or, you know, origins of some sort with the storyline. Great. We had, you know, Aliens vs. Predator, and I thought that was an epic damn film myself. I just don't know what to think. I just, I don't know. Um, It'll be very interesting to see what he comes up with. I'm down for it because I, I do, I am a fan of the Predator, you know, franchise. So it, 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 the possibility, you know, is there. Um, it depends also, you know, besides the storyline, who's going to be cast. That definitely plays a part. I say that a lot. A lot of people are like, oh, this is this, you know, director, yes. Casting who? Because that will let you know if some people are really going to be interested in seeing this film. Now, granted, you know, it's in the beginning stages, you know, if they're writing something and putting it together, maybe we'll probably hear about something later this year, then fine. I'm, I'm down for that. Besides that, I just don't know what else to say about this, but I kind of really just want to kind of bring that out there because since they're doing this, almost people are like, well, yeah, that last thing that came out was some, some, some garbage, some trash, whatever, and all that. They need to fix them. So he sees potential. He needs to look at everything that's been made previously and kind of go back. But I'm like, go back to the first one and kind of use that as a, you know, uh, you know, maybe a catalyst and then move it from there and then figure it out. Maybe we'll see some backstory on um, the Predator's culture and then find a way to bring it into a little bit into the modern than it is what it is because I really feel like it's going to definitely be some sort of modernized look anyway. And that'll be pretty much it but i definitely will keep tabs on this one like i said i would love to see it and i pray by the time it does come out maybe a year or so out from now or two years from now we will be in the theaters because i would really like to enjoy this one in theaters like i enjoyed truly enjoyed the first one <laughs> i saw the second one um i saw the the predator one um in the theater and i definitely saw that last one it came out uh almost three years ago in the theater as well so with that said moving on now this one I'm really interested in, but I'm really wondering in regards to the casting. Don't know how to feel. Granted, it's still up in air. It's not certain. This has to do with the Lucille Ball biopic. Um, I'm 
excited because I used to watch the Lucille Ball. I love, I love Lucy. I loved Lucy Ball and Desi Arnaz. I just thought she was hysterical. I loved her, her girlfriend. Um, can I remember her name right now? It's Ethel. God, I hate when I forget names, but needless to say, she was just hysterical all the time and always getting herself into situation and her husband, Desi, just like, oh my God, like, what have you done? Lucy, you know, just amazing. And it was just so funny. So to know they're going to be doing an actual vibe. And I'm like, okay, I haven't seen anything because I've watched plenty of documentaries over the years in regards to, um, her, you know, her, that this one, this show's been one of the uh, best shows ever created, you know, in, in television history. Let's just put that out there. Definitely give it its kudos, you know, and of course, you know, her being a very strong, you know, female in an instance, you know, in regards to being, you know, the overseer of that show, you know, and propelling her to such superstardom. It's just like, you know, and just, just, just beautiful overall, they know they're going to do it. Okay. I know Aaron Sorkin is at attached with this, you know, in regards to directing. So I definitely feel like it's a capable hands. I'm hearing, you know, little rumors that possibly, um, for Desi Arnaz, um, Javier Bardem. Now I do like him. He's a wonderful actor. Definitely can play on different characters. Many, many. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I will say this. The one that's really kind of, mm, for me is Nicole Kidman playing Lucille Ball. I always say like, does it doesn't, they don't have to look exactly like them, but somewhat close enough. And I'm just not seeing it. If she's being considered, I'm not getting it. Now I know that somebody online had brought it up and I noticed one actress who I really adore, uh, Deborah Messing, putting her foot out there to be considered that I can see. Matter of fact, when they did their last and final, um, Encore, you know, the season for um, Will and Grace, she played, you know, the iconic Lucille Ball and she looks damn near like her, is damn near uncanny, honestly. So I'm just like, okay, I'm hoping it's not true. I don't think it's, it's um, Nicole is, has actually landed it fully yet. It's still, I think, in uh, talks. I'm really hoping it is because I'm just I'm just not seeing it. And even with Harvey Bard, I feel like another person to play Desi Arnaz, I'm trying to think. I like Oscar Isaac and there's somebody else on the tip of my tongue, but it's not their, their face I'm seeing, but I can't think of their name, but that's the, he definitely, I can, I can foresee him for sure. Definitely see Oscar Isaac, but I don't know. Deborah Messing definitely should play that. I'm really hoping she is, but I know a lot of people are all about the star power thing. I'm like, please stop doing that. I can't speak for everybody else. And hopefully one of you all will say something in the comment section. There's nothing wrong with someone who might did they say star part where they're always in movies or whatever granted she's doing television too now um nicole doing a show that's on um, hbo and also with television already deborah messing did one well, and did excellent job. she's already comedic and comedic timing within that show with that you know ensemble cast on there let's just be real so i don't mean i see the plus she's done movies so explain to me how she wouldn't be the perfect one and if anybody sees deborah messing like well she can play this you type her name in and put lucille ball you'll see the pictures from that that episode of her playing her and you can see okay i see why they picked her you know because when i think about some other movies that came out and i'm not gonna put some people on blast whatever that's tried to play other people in biopics should have never happened and so some of you might say i think i know what you're talking about someone should have never been considered in certain movies and there's a certain uh female and i'm I, yeah let me just leave it alone but needless to say um i'm going to really keep tabs on this movie because that will play a part in this and now i'm assuming this might be on streaming service i don't think it's gonna be coming out in the theater i'm really believing that's the, the case then that's fine um i definitely plan to watch it um they state in this one um just the fact that this will be similar to just kind of following her in the fifties, of course, and watching following her and her husband, you know, for like a week's whatever in regards to their work of pride with, you know, maybe just doing the show and maybe, you know, doing some, you know, besides that with in regards to movies or whichever. So that'll be really interesting seeing their dynamic, you know, dealing with, you know, every day with the show and all that, how they handled all that with all that notoriety back then during that era. That will be very, very nice to see. So again, when I know more of you guys, I will definitely keep you all afloat on this one. Now, this one right here, I wanted to bring up. I am a fan of the movie came out back in 84. I love this movie. This has to do with Toxic Avenger. This is supposed to be about the reboot. I talked about this, I want to say, a little bit 
earlier last year and you know it heard little whispers that this was in now grand they talked about this a couple of years ago and then it kind of fell off and this had to do with the fact that at the time it showed Arnold Schwarzenegger was supposed to be attached to this and I remember hearing possibly Kevin Smith was probably going to direct it so I was already hyped right there because I'm a fan of his work both Arnold and Kevin so when I didn't hear anything I didn't know what had happened now recently it's starting to come back up again about the reboot and now it looks like attached to this is Peter Dinklage now I'm a fan of him too now that is going to be very interesting I'm looking forward to seeing um how this is all going to pan out um I don't know how many of y'all have seen him I watched the first one the second one the third one I think that's where I stopped at because I didn't watch any more from now I do like the first and second one the most anyway but the first one, the original one, is the most epic one. There's nothing you're going to tell me. It's just it's just straight epicness. I just love it, whatever, and all that. Because people consider it very cheesy and all that. But it was just good cheesy. And it's 80s. A lot of people are like, oh, this, whatever, and all, please. Some of these people who like to rag on it, you trust and believe me. When nobody's around, they're going to watch it. They just talk all that smack, whatever, and all that. They, 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 they're lovers, you know, underneath, whatever, under the, on the download. So needless to say, let's talk about the fact that in regards to this, they're stating that um, the original person who, of course, you know, had his hands in this, which is the creator, Lloyd uh, Kaufman, Kaufman, excuse me. Um, now that somebody's, you know, interested in this, whatever and all that, they're stating in regards to the overall script. They're saying, uh, Macon Blair knows trauma better than I do, is what he states. He says he's seen everything. He's seen the cartoon. He's seen the Halloween special. He's seen everything. And he loves our movies um, like Trauma's War and Terror Farmer. I've read the script and it's better than the original and I leave it to him. He says, if I'm called upon, I'll be happy to jump in. Now, when he says um, it's better than original, that's kind of hard for me to grasp in that instance because I'm like this. If it wasn't for the original, we wouldn't be having this and we wouldn't be discussing this damn near almost 30, you know, what is this? Over, oh my God, let me do my math. Over 30 years ago. My Lord, I was losing my train of thought of how long it's been. It's been 37 years. Yeah, so wow. So I'm just like, really? I mean, you know, that's what he thinks. You know, he's the creator, so that's how he can feel. Me personally, we'll have, I have to see it. We're going to have to see it for us to really believe that, but I'm still, you know, going to be all about the original. You know, I had this conversation about other movies, so some people like, you know, the, the sequel is, and sometimes nine out of 10, they're kind of right, but every now and then the original still holds you know, up very, very well. And in this instance, I really feel like that. So it really depends on exactly where does Peter Dinklage, you know, fit into this mold in regards to him playing Tox Avenger. How is um, Tox Avenger going to look? I'm really interested in seeing, you know, how that's going to play out. I'm looking forward to seeing who else is going to be casting this with him. It's going to be very interesting. And how the scene of the transformation, you know, after, you know, the stuff falls in him, you know, it's going to be really interesting how graphic they're going to get with those scenes you know are we going to get a rated r with this you know all that plays a part you know i love me some peter dinklage but it's got to be r and it's got to be gore fest a little bit in this whatever and all that especially when you see the fight scene was his remember how it was done in the original so you know is he going to have a, a girl you know this girl going to be blind like in the you know so all these things play a part so i'm just really really excited and hype at the prospect of them doing uh this movie now it's been it's been long you know some movies of course are being remade it's nothing i can do about it I've, I've come to just somewhat embrace it there's still some movies i'm like please don't touch you know and i just hope that the ones that are in my mind i'm just not gonna say them out loud not to jinx them but yes this one i'm down for it so i'm here for it so when i know more about this one i'm gonna definitely let you all know more about that now the last one i want to talk about i'm really really looking forward to i talked about this last march um when it was actually in the process you know of finishing up and this was actually filming and you know just progressing along this has to do uh with james wan's malignant now granted he is now finally finished the film granted this was supposed to have been finished really um <laughs> last year but due to COVID and pandemic he was trying to work this movie in between other movies as he puts it when he posted about it on twitter this was supposed to be the small little movie that was supposed to be done in between the bigger movies but it looked like it went further and longer than the bigger movies and um unfortunately i'm sad that it had to happen but i'm happy that you know everything worked out i'm really hyped for this movie because we still don't know anything about the plot it's just painfully bothered me because, I mean, he's all encompassed because he does a little bit of everything, but he's known for his horror. And I am truly here to see what he's going to give us. Now, I'm going to post up part of a post that came up from Twitter, which shows, you know, this, you know, like go like type of, you know, 
I don't know, knife or whatever with a glove. Um, I don't know what to think. I don't know how to way to find a way to symbolize it, but that th just looking at that has me so beyond intrigued and I want to know more and it's just mind boggling. Now, I will say this when he, he noted uh, on Twitter, he says he shares, I finally wrapped it last week. So this just happened not that long ago. He says, this was supposed, like I said, to be my little horror thriller. I do between my big ones. And he's like, but the pandemic pushed it along. He says, also, I'm super excited for this film. I don't even know how to describe it. He says, I wanted to do something original and gender bending and different to my other work, but still in the spirit of horror thrillers, I grew up with more to come. And I'm hoping there's more to come, meaning what's happening in synopsis now. I will say a couple of people who are listed in this film, one of the main ones being Annabelle Wallace. We should already know who she is. She's been in quite a few things that he's actually been a part of, which I'm actually excited for that. She's playing the lead. Uh, it doesn't note on any other actual um, people attached to the film at the moment that I see, so that's fine. But her being at the top lets me know it's truly, you know, something I'm definitely looking forward to, regardless... It doesn't matter who was cast. Honestly, he's the director. I feel it's in capable hands, so I already know he's going to put forth the best, you know, in his actors, which lets me know. Now, they're stating the film does come out. They have a date for it. It's supposed to be coming through, what is this, um, HBO Max. It's supposed to be September 10th. So I'm excited to see it. I'm looking forward to, um, when do we think this will showcase a teaser? Um maybe late spring right beginning of summer we'll probably get something maybe may june and then i will figure by july you know we'll probably get mid-july beginning august we'll get the actual full trailer and i'm gonna be here for because at least we know the date and i'm glad we don't have to wait because a lot of the stuff that's coming out on hbo max that might be a movie that's supposed to be released in the theaters sometimes they're not always telling us a date right away so i think now they're trying to do that like i was surprised that we found out about um the uh, Godzilla Kong, you know, versus Kong film coming out, of course, March 26th. At first, the poster didn't show the date. And I was like, when? You know, so at least they're doing that. And I'm like, thank you, because this definitely is one of those anticipated films that I've been waiting to know more about literally almost the whole year. So March was March 2020. So here we are in 2021, almost about to be February. So it's been almost a year. So I'm kind of glad now we have something to talk about with that. And I'm so excited to see this. Oh, I'm just really excited to see this. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. So with that said, you guys, when I know um, anybody else who's casting this, whatever, who might bring a little bit extra as opposed to just Annabelle Wallace, I will let you all know. So with that said, I am all done. As I always state, you guys comment below anything I talked about. I love to hear what you all feel about it. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next movie news. You guys take care.